but yeah, let's let's get cracking. Well, welcome to another ACF Open Office Hours. This is our ACF Chat Friday session. We are recording these sessions now, so you'll see that in this on the top left of the screen, and that will appear on our WP Engine Builders channel, which is great. It's nice for people to be able to catch up if they if they're not making these meetings. Um, yeah, we've got number of members of the team. We've got Liam Gladdy, Matt Shaw. We've got maybe some others coming as well, but we've also got Damon Cook from Devro, and we've got Mike Davey, our content editor, uh, and I'm Ian Paulson, the product manager. People, few, few more people are trickling in. Let's do the usual. We are still in the running for the Talk Mags bracket plugin madness thing going on. We have reached the semi-finals, and we are who are we up against? We are up against, well, we beat custom post type UI and we're up against, how do I not even know this? Has it gone? Managed WP. Managed WP worker plugin, which I guess is the client plugin for Managed WP. So yeah. yeah, we are facing them. And if we win that semi-final round, we may come across WooCommerce or Table Press. So yeah. Go and vote. You get two votes. That'd be awesome. Much appreciated. Um, what else have we got going on? Well, I guess we're working pretty hard wrapping up the 6.1 release. That's that's the major thing that most of the team are are occupied with at the moment, all of the um, release prep. Um, it's close. I want to say it's going to be next week, but I don't like to say things like dates or times. He gets but, told yeah. off by me and Matt if he starts talking about data yeah. publicly. But it's very close. Um, obviously, it's Friday today, so it's not going to happen today. But we're close. So, yeah, that obviously, just as a reminder, if you haven't um, heard us talking about it recently, and I'm sure we have heard, talked about it a lot, but 6.1 is including the custom post type and taxonomy registration feature um, that's going to just improve all of the, the workflows around um, creating the data modeling that you need to to turn WordPress into a proper CMS and doing it all from ACF rather than having to use code or another plugin and just unifying that kind of workflow a little bit more. We have in this session today, we've still got the Q&A feature. Um, so feel free to ask questions there. It's at the bottom uh, on the toolbar of Zoom, just to the right of share screen and polls. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask ask questions in there or in the chat if you don't see that Q and A feature, uh, and the team and, and I will try and get to answer some questions. Um, I mentioned it earlier. We've got Damon and Mike from our sort of DevRail slash content teams. I think we'd quite like to know a bit more about pain points uh, with anything to do with ACF, but blocks as well. Um, Mike, do you want to just do an ask and we can see what comes up in the chat? Sure thing. Thanks, Ian. Uh, folks, I um, personally, I'd really like to know what sort of tutorials you'd really like to see most. Um, what I want to know is where you're running into trouble, either with using ACF that you think, okay, I really need a clear step-by-step -step explanation of this, or even just something you've run into trouble in our docs. You're like, hmm, do they mean this? Do they mean this? I'm not quite sure. Uh, and a lot of you have kindly reached out to us in the last year to let us know where you found inconsistencies or something wasn't clear, you've run into trouble. Uh, I just want to let you know, please keep doing that. It really helps us discover where we can make improvements. And if there are, say, specific tutorials or specific documents that you want to see, just let us know. We'll do our best. We're uh, we're currently on a big drive to improve and mo and modernize all of our documentation. So get your uh, suggestions in now would be would be what I would say. Yeah, feel free to just type them in chat um, and we'll, we'll keep a log and go from there. Oh, we've also got Dale Williams here today. He's our, our UX designer. Um, I, I've probably got his job title wrong there, but UI, UX, that's what Dale does. He makes everything look pretty. So if you've got any thoughts or you know, things that we can improve there, feel free to yell at them in chat as well, and uh, we can uh, get Dale involved. Um, but we got our first question from Christoph uh, asking about JSON sync for CPTs and whether that's going to be in 6.1. Um, and the similar answer is yes, uh, it's already in there. Um, it's in the beta one. We've done a few fixes since beta one, I think, to do with some quirks of, of some some random little bugs. But yeah, all, all ready to go, and we'll be there in the, in our six point one release, maybe next week. 
I had some uh, actually to to dwell on 6.1, actually, I had a few clarifications for my own purpose, but also I think it would be helpful for others. But I know the the clarification on CPT UI, uh, you know, when 6.1 hits, somebody has CPT UI activated with a with custom post types registered through that and activate, you know, the latest what what is that going to look like for them because they i think i keep hearing you know i want it to be a seamless uh ideally a seamless transition yeah i think th there's two options there if they're if the user or if they're using cpt ui and they love cpt ui they can continue using cpt ui like the, they don't need to use the post type and taxonomy registration feature in acf um it's going to be uh, possible to turn it off with a filter um, so if you if you are very much set on an existing workflow with CPT UI, another plugin, or doing it with code, you really don't need to use our feature, and we can we can hide it, we can you know turn it off. But if you would like to move from CPT UI to using ACF to register your post types and taxonomies and bring across those existing ones that you've created with CPT UI, then we do have support for that. And in six point one, I think. I'm not sure is it in the beta but it's going to be at least in in the release candidate uh, sorry not the release candidate the actual release when that happens um importing from cpti yeah 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 that's in the beta one right that's in the beta, yeah yeah uh, so you you, you... Yeah, yeah i'm working on the docs at the moment but yeah the users will see once they upgrade update to 6.1 for ACF, they'll see um, a notice in only in the ACF settings pages, the admin pages to say you are, you, you've registered post types or taxonomies with, with CPT UI, you can go over to our import tools page or the tools page where you can import directly from CPT UI. And then at that point, we'll bring it across to the ACF, um, the ACF way of doing things and you can safely um, deactivate CPT UI and then yeah, move to move to the consolidated one plugin approach, um, the consolidated sort of UI, uh, and and benefit really from that the workflow that we've tried to make it type nicely coupled with the ACF custom fields as it is at the moment. So you register a post type from there. Once you've saved the post type, you can go and quickly and easily go and add fields to that post type, or add a taxonomy to that post type, or um, link an existing field group to that new post type. Um, so if you've got common field groups that are used amongst lots of post types, you can quickly make the connections there. Uh, Maxim, I'll grab your first question and I'll let everybody else grab the other ones after that. Oh, wow. um, that's the one uh, about uh, choosing a font from the menu icon. Um, we actually spent a lot of time with Dale uh, on this one to, to try and figure out what we ship in the first release um, because Obviously, it makes sense to support icons, uh, but WordPress, the way WordPress supports that is see, by default dash icons, but you can also paste an SVG, I think, right, Matt? Um, and it could just be the full SVG markup or even a URL to a file uh, to, a, to a different icon somewhere, and it can even be a remote file. So there was a whole bunch of things that we needed to support, and there was, wasn't really a nice way to, to make that, you know, elegant in the UI. So for 6.1, it's just a text box and you can enter the dash icons. We've added some documentation that you know, let, lets you go and view all those dash icons and, and copy the, the code nicely. Uh, but we are absolutely going to improve that in the future, um, likely with something like Font Awesome or you know, any other way of doing it. But there'll be some sort of selection of, hey, I, I want this to kind of, kind of react based on what you pick from a drop down, whether you want it to be a dash icon and we let you pick or whether you want to yeah, pick the URL because at the moment a text box is a little bit confusing. Um, and I'll let Ian pick up the next question uh, about uh, features going forward. Yeah, I mean, you're totally right to call it out. It's the first first feature in a long time that hasn't been really anything to do with custom fields. Obviously, the ACF blocks is arguably the last one that moved slightly beyond just fields. Um, I mean, frankly, we're not going to do loads more of things outside of fields, post types and taxonomies, the kind of the core um, content registering things that you need to do to build a WordPress site. And obviously ACF blocks is part of that. So yeah, no, we're not, we're not changing things 
too drastically i think this is the the most we're, we're pushing the the envelope with acf um but because it, it it works with people's existing workflows and and the way they've used acf um to add to the post types that they've registered the custom post types um so no we, we've got a ton of uh things on our backlog that are improvements to existing uh features within the plugin which are custom fields related um that we'll be we'll be doubling down on and, and going back to um in the next sort of few months and essentially that feature is more about making acf fields available easier to people that aren't developers right so if you've got you can already attach acf fields to custom post types and taxonomies uh, you can expect us to do more down that route of places you can attach fields that you have to write code for right now i think yeah. uh, we've already talked a bit about you know making options pages in, in the ui and things like that just to just to make it easier for folks that are just dropping in and, and basically don't want to write code they've already got their theme yeah they're already using all the the output features uh, and yeah. yeah it just makes life easier i think i think it's not just a you know so some of these things seem like they're they're there to sort of serve the the no code like less developer re users but actually i think that like um liam just mentioned the options page that's a classic example of um you know you can go and register an options page if you've got acf pro you can do it in code but the amount of times that i've done it myself where you 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 create a field group and you know that that is going to be an options page and you you change the location rules to say add it as an options page but there's no options page registered and then you have to come out of your editor you've got to go find the code that you need to use to register that, to create that options page and then go into your theme and put that code in and then go back to the field group like just all of that isn't a great experience for you know fresh users technical developers or veterans of acf it's like it's just a, not a great workflow so having these things within the ui um and and making that that process of you know you're creating a new field group maybe at that point you're registering an options page there and then and it's done in the one process um so yeah we'll, we'll be we'll definitely look into improve the the user experience for everybody not just like non-developers uh, and to your first feature suggestion about showing uh, a better display essentially of, of other plugins and products that add on to acf i know that's something that we've been talking to mike about um we, we think it probably lives on on acf.com to start with rather than in the plugin but you know if, if we can think of a nice ui and a nice way of getting it in there there's, there's no reason why why it can't end up in the plugin as well yeah yeah i think it, it's a it's a great community in the sense that there are a ton of plugins out there I think the only difficulty with like third-party code and third-party plugins is that you know at the point they're released they're great but are they supported long term like do you come across an acf add-on that does x and that's what you really need but it hasn't been touched in three years like and does it work with acf6 does it so i think that kind of um piece around community and making sure that we're telling our users to use these things but you're vouching for it at that point and then you kind of have all this, this extra responsibility of making sure that everything's still up to date and managing that so it's yeah th there's a little bit more wrapped up in it than just displaying like all of the the great add-ons that are out there but yeah it, it, we'll, we'll definitely take that feature and a suggestion away um and liam do you want to take number four as well yeah uh yeah, it seems like a sensible one. So this is about um, in the ACF blocks, there's no title of a block within the editor, only on the right side. I assume, Maxim, you mean on the edit view there, right? Not because you wouldn't obviously want it to show in the in, when you're previewing what's going to be on the front end, um, as that would live in your template. Uh, but absolutely, if, if you talk about the edit form, there's no reason why we can't add that. You could, you could kind of add that already with like the message field but that is probably a field block but yeah i get that that's clunky so yeah we can look at doing doing something nicer there we um once we've got 6.1 out one of the next things we've got to look at is is what's next for acf blocks um, and what our kind of long-term vision is for that and with wordpress changes and starting to make things to try and look more native so as part of that we'll uh we'll consider all that kind of stuff of, of what the edit form looks like Sorry, I just started typing a response to Brian uh, in the in the Q and A. Let me just see if I can change that. 
Oh yeah, nice. Arts Alive. Yeah, so I've not got anything concrete to say in terms of what's next after 6.1. Um, we're, you know, we're quite busy with the 6.1. It's hard to hard to sort of get your head up and and see what's next. Although that has, we will be freeing our, ourselves up to actually do a bit more prioritizing. Um, but we want to kind of go back to uh, a few releases of just long-standing but uh, improvements that have been asked for and uh, requested for a long time trying to improve the the content editing experience we've done a lot of stuff in the plugin admin um, but we want to try and obviously make acf's content editing experience as best it can be so you know developers can give their editors the best experience by using acf um, but we're going to be probably sharing more and more through sessions like this um, in the next sort of few months uh, as as things you know, as we come out of the 6.1 release and, and make sure that we crush any bugs that come up after we release it. Um, so yeah, keep, keep coming uh, and we'll be, we'll keep talking. What else have we got in the Q and A or? I guess you kind of answered Christoph's question uh, already, right? Yeah, well, no, I don't, yeah, okay. I, I wouldn't say, we're heading in that direction. I think something that perhaps I sound like a broken record, but we've been trying to say every time we've had sessions like this, or we've done the, the WP Engine build mode live um, takeover, that there is just many ways to WordPress. And like we keep saying that internally, it's a bit of a mantra, but it's like the ACF supports very highly technical developers, people programmatically registering the fields, they're using, you know, um, version control, they're using their ACF within their sort of workflow for deploying sites and they don't want to use the UI stuff that is being put in but we're still um, supporting that like we did the composer uh, installation for ACF Pro we're trying to make sure that um, block users are, are uh, continue to be empowered to create block based sites with ACF blocks where you know the, the UI changes that we're doing for custom post types and uh, taxonomies and then maybe we do for options pages does help the the, the less um developer folks but also people building stuff with headless like they may be developers but they may not be wordpress developers and they don't want to go into the functions.php to register a post type they just want to do it there and then from from the ui and then create the rest of their headless build with the front end stuff so yeah the, 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 there's there's definitely lots of ways to do wordpress with acf and we, we're definitely not um focusing on one more than the other others should i say um so yeah no is the an short answer christoph if that's all right if that works for you yeah i think you can also tell by the number of people that have asked us about cpt ui import right how many people this is actually going to impact uh as you know i used to work in an agency and i would write everything in code so to me it, i was similar like yeah i just write it in code I, i'll carry on doing that and that's cool you can do that and you know, we've made sure that all the hooks and filters that we've added to disable it, disable it in such a way that it kind of completely, you know, there's no additional classes or memory usage or anything like that. So we've been, you know, try to be as performant as we can there in the, in the code that we developed for 6.1. Yeah. And I think it's, it, you know, it, it doesn't mean that just because you can do it in the UI, it's not a developer tool. I mean, we've got a way to, there is a workflow there in 6.1 where, you know, you're using ACF locally to build your site. You can just use the UI to create the post type, use the option, all the settings that aren't kind of a bit more uh, clear in what the, the settings are named and the, the sort of the help description than if you look at the, the WordPress codex um, it's documentation, it's not even the codex now. So you, you could actually just create it all in the UI, export it as PHP, and then stick that in your site. And you never need to touch the UI again, but it's actually sometimes quicker and easier to do that even as a developer than having to go and hunt through the documentation, work out what the arguments are and what you need for this and that. So yeah, it's 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 balancing these these things between different different technical needs. Yeah, you've been as well, but even the stuff we you do in the UI and it seems less developer focused than is done in the UI. I mean we have like a ton of hooks, filters, um, you can customize it pretty much every way you want to. So even it can support a lot more like different stuff than you would expect. Yeah, and, and, and JSON sync and everything. 
Dale and Ian have spent an awful lot of time thinking about the UX of that, you know, which settings you enable allow you to, to use other settings, right? That's something that the codex and the documentation for WordPress, I should say, it's it's not all that clear, right? And you, because it's not structured in a way that makes sense. And and me and Matt can tell you the amount of times we've revised this UI <laughs> that we've been building it, the uh, the level of detail they've gone into in, in thinking about how how users are going to step through this logically rather than what the documentation says. I, I, I'm really proud of, of what Dale and Ian have, have done there. Um, I'll grab Bill's question from the Q&A, which is uh, about uh, ACF and ACF blocks with full site editing. Um, yes, yeah, absolutely. We tested this. We brought support for it in 5.12, I think it was, that we first started support. There's some quirks around the iframe, and that's one of the things we, we were talking about. You know, in full site editing, every block lives inside of an iframe, and there are limitations there to how third-party JavaScript libraries can, can inject content into that. So things like date pickers and things like that that actually ship in WordPress core can't even work inside of a block. Obviously, that's not an issue for WordPress core because they don't expect you to be using inputs and things like that in a block because it's, it's supposed to be a view and you're supposed to use a sidebar. So uh, as for a quirk of ACF there, we, we have to disable the edit form in, pre, in, you know, in the actual block that you might be used to from using it in pages. Uh, so it all feels edited by the sidebar. Um, but that, again, that's that's the thing we know we have to figure out a way around, um, and that likely means you know, more React components uh, for each of the ACF field types, probably the way we go there, which solves the issues that other folks have talked about of, of how we don't look native. Um, and if we can you know, make a relationship component as a, as a React component, then, uh, then that gives us that opportunity. We just have to do it in a way that makes sense for ACF, right? Because we don't want to suddenly have this whole new UI that's only available in blocks and not in the in the back end, but then also obviously don't want to very react things in the classic editor. So finding that balancing act is, is what we'll be working on in the next few months. Uh, specifically the stuff about the nav menus. I know they've done some work in that in 6.2. I'm going to look at Anthony here because he's my, my resident WordPress nerd when it comes to what's in every release. Um, I, I think that works. We did some, um, this was literally about two years ago. Uh, we did some, some kind of proof of concept stuff with the nav menus team because ACF fields didn't work on nav menus. Um, I, I think they pivoted away from, from them working that way. So I'm not actually too sure if fields work, but we will make a note of that and, and go test that. Um, if they work like if it, you know, if it works in the same way and it has the back and pat stuff with the, the way old nav menus worked, then yeah, the, the, it will work. Um, if not, we might need to do some changes, but yeah, we'll look into that and if need be, make a plan to ship that. And talking about blocks, like Mike was saying earlier, we're, we're trying to improve the documentation on the website and a big piece of that that we've you know heard the feedback again and again is that the, the documentation on ACF blocks and creating ACF blocks is you know, it needs some work uh, and that's something Damon you're working on at the moment right but um is, yep. what what do we want to know about that um yeah I mean I'm curious my immediate <clears throat> thing I'm trying to update is the the simple tutorial there right within the docs I think there's a testimonial block so I'll probably be looking to update uh that that example and just pull in some of the newer um ACF up uh, block support API information to make it clear to, to users. And, but if, um, yeah, I don't know if there's a different block that we might be able to focus on besides a testimonial, but that, that seems to be pretty common use case, I guess, as a simple example, but I'm open to ideas if anybody thinks of any good ones. <laughs> yeah, it would be good to know from people who are using ACF blocks. Um, to create custom blocks, what what type of blocks? Like, drop them in the chat. What what blocks did you did you create on your last site build? What what's what's the go to block that you're using, or you know, or that you you have to create for for client sites or whatnot? And also, is yeah. there anything you haven't been able to do with blocks? Right? Is there anything that the documentation isn't clear on? I know when we released blocks v two in in ACF six uh, last autumn, uh, we 
we kind of relied on the WordPress documentation a lot, right? We point people over there for things like supports and and that kind of thing. And I think that their their documentation isn't isn't as wonderful as it could be. And so we need to fill those gaps to explain. How, you know, if you want to do things like color palettes, right? That's all available in the block editor. Um, we know some folks do that with you know selects and things like that. And we need to do a better better job of explaining that to folks that hey, all these Gutenberg features you can use in ACF blocks. Uh, it's just a case of knowing which which attributes to set where. Nice examples of people. Accordion seems to be a popular one. Yeah, we actually got a good good uh, good documentation on that one already. Uh, Damon did a piece. I think is that the WPE Builders blog, Damon. Sorry, I'm slow on the mute. Yeah, yeah, it's on the uh, ACF builders. I can grab the link and drop it in chat. Cool. Um, and I, I'd be curious. Another thing is how often people are using inner blocks like that. That would be, um, you know, would that be considered kind of a, a simple block? You know, using leveraging inner blocks, or is that a, kind of a, like an advanced block? Or <laughs> I'd love to hear what the community thinks about stuff like that. Yeah, and it's interesting. Christoph is saying that you're you're doing a load of stuff that pulls data from custom post types, and I guess if you're thinking of outside of an ACF block perspective, that's kind of is that what the query loop block is that you can choose an object that is post pages or a custom post type and you know iterate through. But I guess it's not as fully featured enough. But using an ACF block that grabs that data gives you that freedom. Yeah, I'd love to do something. Maybe I'll talk to Damon about this, actually. I'd love to do a variation, the query loop block that lets you query based on ACF metadata on the post types. I know we, we kind of held off on that because we're like, that's obviously going to go home to the core, right? They, 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 every release, they've added more and more things to the query loop block. Hopefully, that will be coming soon. But maybe that's something we can contribute upstream to, to Gutenberg itself. Yeah. Yeah, Brian. So the Brian there saying that he he's already suggested to have meta fields of ACF data sort of all. One of the, one of the most common feature requests we get from ACF blocks is people asking for multiple inner blocks, um, and I think that is just just goes to show really how we need to do a better job of, of explaining how yeah you know, how to use acf blocks and how to use the block editor because in theory you shouldn't need multiple inner blocks inside of a block right because once you've got one you can have a block that has an has another one if you need it but it's kind of we should give some more examples i guess of why you wouldn't need multiple inner blocks when you can just use one and restrict them to, to blocks inside of it Eric has said he's used uh, a generate a, the blocks query uh, loop to display ACF data with good success. Is that, oh, that's generate. Is that the generate WP blocks? Is that a different? Or am I misunderstanding, misreading? Generate press. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Some other Q and A ones popped up as well. So we've seen people use like the the old WYSIWYG field, and they've tried to put that into to blocks. Um, and, and yeah, that literally is an inner block, right? If you if you just change that whole whole concept to an inner block, then you get all of the native WordPress rendering, and you don't get all the the weird quirks of trying to load tiny MCE into into the block editor, which is just yeah, it's not a good user experience. So uh, I think we uh, in six point one in our new browse field at Moidal, we we kind of give some some tips about what fields don't work well in blocks. And maybe we should uh, maybe we should do an article on that as well. You know, at what point you can replace an ACF field with an inner block, basically. It's really interesting to see 
how people are doing things and, and why they're doing it. It's very much like the ACF blocks are the block shortcode effectively where you can do whatever and render whatever rather yeah. than, you know, core blocks are very, you know, distinct and tightly coupled to what they are rather than allowing you to, you know, who's just said it? Oh, Lucas, you created a block that just pulls in the most popular articles from Google Analytics. Like, there's, there's no way I guess you could do that with a core block or core blocks or query loop or anything like that. It's that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask the question in the Q&A about registering JavaScript and CSS on a block and when WordPress decides to output it. Um, that's one of the things we changed in, in an ACF blocks V2, which came out in, in ACF 6.0. Um, basically the, there've been an awful lot of changes to the way assets are handled, uh, in, in blocks over the last year or so. Um, and if you are using V2 with block.json, um, to register your ACF blocks, then you can use the, the WordPress script and editor script and style and editor style and all those, there's a whole bunch of combinations, I think view script and view style, and they support arrays now at various points across WordPress. Um, and if you're using those, then WordPress will just handle the assets for you. You know, if you put multiple blocks on the page, you'll only get queued once and all, and all that kind of stuff. Um, there, there's a quirk around it will include your assets, even if the block isn't on the page by default, but you can turn that off with a filter, uh, which is something like should, should load block core assets. You know what that, do you want know what I'm talking about, Damon? Should load separate core block assets. Is yeah. That kind of for that. Yeah, that comes up often. <laughs> yeah, that one. And if you set that to true, it will only output the uh, the styles, the blocks that are rendered on the page. I'm not too sure why that isn't true by default. I think it's probably a performance thing, so it doesn't have to try and figure out what blocks are on the page beforehand. But if you've got layers of blocks registered, then you definitely want to set that to true. Um, so, sorry, I'm not super clear. Because there's the stuff that you can register assets directly with ACF when you register the block. I can't remember the property name off the top of my head, but, um, and we register our blocks using PHP. So we don't, we don't have theme JSON, we don't have JSON for the uh, blocks themselves or everything's PHP. So if I use that property for JavaScript and CSS, um, are you saying that it will only enqueue my assets once, even if I use the multiple blocks and everything will work? Uh, so it depends on what you're using in the PHP. If you're using the legacy, um, the, the legacy functions and methods that ACF provided to, to register the assets for you, then I actually don't know what happens um, if you put the block on multiple times. I would have imagined, because it all goes through the WordPress registration system at its core, that it should only still add it once because you know it's not literally out, but each time the block is output, it's registered as a, as a script that's required on the on the page. Um, but you can probably use the script, you know, all of the modern block.json uh, methods, I should say, you know, the parameters on the on the block registration in that legacy PHP style. So it's worth exploring changing from in queue block assets to, you know, script view script. Um, and everything that's listed on in the block.json documentation. Oh, okay. So today um, I just used WP and Q script. I didn't use the built-in ACF ones just because I found them to be a little bit buggy and not do what I wanted. So um, I just used the default WordPress ones. Um, yeah. yeah, but we, like I said, we don't use the block JSON. We do everything in PHP. So that is a, it's a legacy thing, right? Um, you're, you're likely to find more and more things as WordPress is kind of moving away from that and, and to block.json. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on supporting it as long as we can from our side, but there will likely become a point where, you know, you want to do something that you just can't do by registering it in PHP and you'll have to create block.json for them. Um, and yeah, maybe there's something in, you know, in an in intermediate tree we can, we can do that helps you convert an old PHP registration to a block.json 
yeah, we can we can talk to Damon and his team around around that kind of thing. Um, you got any advice on on that, Damon? What, how do you see the the legacy PHP registration of blocks? Uh, the are we talking? Actually, I just had. It, so I'm going to put it in the chat. Are we talking about the differences between those two? The register block type and ECF register block type, or yeah. So the old obviously before block.json came around in five seven five eight, um, you you used to have to use register block type. ACF register block type is kind of just a layer on top of that that strips out, you know, gives us a bit more knowledge about the block and and lets us enqueue all of our stuff and and things like that. But we just call register block type essentially at, at the end. So um, it's kind of the transition from that legacy. PHP stuff into into the modern blog.json where you just rather than passing it an array a PHP array of all of your block metadata you would pass it the path to the blog.json and essentially that is the way to think about it right because you are literally just turning a PHP array into a, 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 a JSON array yeah. um, and, and in theory most things right now are still supported but obviously we can't guarantee what WordPress are going to do in the future and yeah in modern you know new versions of WordPress, they're not thinking about folks that are still using the 5.7 version of, of registering blocks anymore. So we'll support it as long as we can, but there will almost certainly become a time where they're doing something funky in, in asset loading or, or something along those lines that we just can't support until you, you translate your blocks to block.json. Yeah, I'd have to say most of my exploration has been done with the the most recent um, ACF blocks, you know, using block.json. So, yeah, I have little knowledge to <laughs> offer in the for the PHP registration area. But certainly, the you know register WP register script and register style they are not the supported ways of registering assets for blocks. So they might work, but it's more of a consequence of them not being in iframes and the fact that WordPress is just throwing stuff onto the page regardless, rather than it actually being an officially supported method. So yeah, there's, there's not much we can, we can do to help on that other than, yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to support. Is that, is that any clearer at all? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I've seen the writings on the wall for a while. They're going much more JavaScript, and then with FSC, they're going to HTML, which is unfortunate because you lose basically all the power of WordPress is in the filters and actions of being able to change stuff. Like the render template, for example, right now our code is able to change the render template based on the data in ACF. So I give all my blocks like a not all my but some of my blocks will have a template do, drop down template one template two and it changes the render template on the fly in php yeah. and it keeps it nice and concise which i could do with a singular render template with just a bunch of case statements but it's much more dirty and non-standard but I, i'm at use case right there we, we've had people ask us before hey why don't acf blocks you know why can't i add it in line like the block editor why isn't it all native and that example right there is why we can't do that, right? Because the template for most, well, a significant number of ACF blocks is going to change completely based on some ACF data value. So we can't know that this text area is still going to be here if, if the value of it changes to something else. And then we just end up in a mess of, of, you know, templates changing randomly as people start typing and it, yeah, it just gets really messy. So we have to have that kind of transitional point of hey you're in edit mode now you're in preview mode um and we'll, we'll try and figure out ways around that and and maybe you know some sort of back compat switch of hey this block needs to have this two distinct modes as we as we try and get things closer but yeah it's always going to be an issue yeah yeah i agree i'm i'm super happy with the direction you're going though because the exactly how it functions is has all the drawbacks you said but that's exactly why I use it because yeah, I exactly. need all that flexibility. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. So, so don't worry. We're definitely not going to abandon you. We we're well aware that that's how people use ACF blocks. We need to maintain it. Got a couple more questions in the chat in the Q and A. We'll see if five more minutes. Uh, Ross, you've asked about inner blocks. 
Liam, you're typing an answer to Lucas. So I was going to take that. One. You want to take Ross as well? <laughs> I'll let you talk on something else and I'll go back to Ross once I take this answer. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, Damon, has that given you food for thought in the sense of your examples, possible, you know, more simple examples or more complex examples? I think it'd be, it'd be quite good to explore some of these things where blocks are used to go and get data from other places or, you know, stuff that you can't do within core blocks with CPTs um, as, as a more complex example and, and, and more of a, like, you can kind of get and show anything that you need in a block. Yeah, yeah, uh, that that definitely sounds like a com you know a more complex example of it. I think it's worth having available to the community um, for sure, and that's definitely something I'm gonna work towards. I just want to get a simple example out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ross, your question. I'm gonna go and test this before I, but I'm gonna say how I think it works right now, and I might be wrong. But if so, I'll uh, I'll correct it in the blog post we put up about this later this week. Um, Green chair. Sure. Yeah, I'm fairly I'm fairly sure the reason you don't get a plus button is because your inner block is empty by default, right? So if you when you create a new Gutenberg page, it has a paragraph tag in it, a paragraph block, I should say, by default. And then once there's something there, that's where the plus button attaches to. So once you mouse into that paragraph block, theme is nodding, so that's a good sign. Than the plus appears. So if you use inner blocks in ACF and you also give it a template of, hey, this should have an empty paragraph in it, or even you know, the simplest of of blocks, probably the paragraph is, is the simplest there, then you'll get that plus button by default. Um, you just kind of have to give it something because by default that inner block container is just zero height. And so it is probably trying to show you the plus button, but it's it's just invisible because there's nothing in that the inner block already. So if you add some example content or a placeholder or anything like that, um, which you can do through the attributes you can pass on inner blocks, um, I think it's uh, just template, if I recall correctly. And I'm pretty sure we've got examples of that already on, on ACF uh, on, on our documentation, but we'll check that as well. Um, then yeah, if you just add some placeholder content, then you'll get that plus button as you'd expect. Cool. Nice. Glad that helps. Oh, thanks, Earl. The... He was so proud of that. He sent me a message. He yeah. sent me a message about that about seven p.m. at night. Of, hey, I, I like... made them. I made them have to do RC four or whatever, which one that was. Oh, it was a crazy, crazy feature that or improvement that got added really late to the user.php file in WordPress core that hasn't been touched for years. And it was like I'm testing a plugin, going, "This doesn't look right." Yeah, thanks, Earl. Thanks for that recognition. Um, well, we're pretty much all at time. So yeah, it's been another enjoyable session. Thank you to everyone who's come, discussed and uh, given us some help with uh, ideas for our, for our docs and, and just generally been part of the community. So appreciate that. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And hopefully in between that time, you will see ACF 6.1 out the door. <laughs>